Hey everyone, my name is Peter Gillett, they, them, and I'm really happy that you're either joining me live or you're here for the, for the recorded video watching after the live event. And I have a, a few things prepared for today. Um, the first thing, though, is I want to uh, remind everyone that um, I am sending this video out from the traditional and unceded territory of the Wolostokyuk Nation. And I'm very happy to be able to live and work here thanks to the treaties of peace and friendship. And as a recommendation for continuing the, the good relations and bettering the relations between our nations, I would recommend that control of natural resources be given back to First Nations. I'd also like to thank my patrons on Patreon. Without their financial and emotional support, being a writer would be much more difficult for me. So without further ado, I'm going to start today's readings with through the visor of his helmet. The monochromatic landscape made it difficult to pick out details. Park is collecting samples for analysis, but we can tell you that this stuff is between 30 and 50 microns thick on every surface so far. As for the channel being private, you know it's all recorded into the logs. They skirted the rubble of one of the... Should get some answers out of it soon. I know there wasn't a speck of purple on that thing, but keep the protocols in place, okay? I'm thinking this is looking more and more like biological warfare. In one piece. I'm heading off to our bunk, off to our bunk now. Love you. Sleep tight, moonshine. I love you too. Older Cricken waved him over. If you're done chatting with your spike, any of the Garagons Jones had ever met. Yes, sir. He was just telling me that they have some have made some progress with the satellite, and it should contain some more information. Keep the chair. They swept into the first large room. The officer and three other scientists joined them. This is glass. Park exited one of the flat pieces of debris near the outer wall. She picked up another piece and scraped the two together. She held one piece up to the light. You can see right through it when the purple dust is removed. She put it carefully. Four hours later, the team was on the second basement level, standing in front of the locked door of a vault. Cricken waved at the large metal portal. Let's see what you can do, Jones. He turned the tumblers with his left thumb while checking his screen in his right hand. The purple makes even these embossed markings hard to read. Purple on purple. Without the all box, even its makers would have had trouble opening with this vault. Park scanned the wall. The purple 15 microns thick on this level. Perhaps light helps it to spread. The door groaned as Jones swung it open on its ancient hinges. Cricken pointed his lamp into the dark vault. Park whistled. Sorry, but it was just a bit disconcerting seeing so many colors. Besides the paintings and frames, murals covered all of the other surfaces of the room. Jones secured the door so it wouldn't swing shut, and they entered. Row after row of paintings greeted them. They recorded it all with their all boxes. There are books over here coming in here. He pointed to the purple footprints they were leaving on the floor. Let's keep scanning so these images won't be lost. Park recorded a voice log into her all box while she scanned. The emotions of the subjects in the paintings are inscrutable to us. The green exoskeleton faces could be happy, sad, or afraid. Without further study, the clothing, objects, animals, and plants are equally unfathomable. Holder Bujol 
stepped up to watch over her shoulder. She was careful to avoid Sincina's fluffy tail, typical of a Vovian. Let's see it. A fuzzy video played with crackling sound. It was a single person facing the camera in what looked to be an official chamber. It delivered a speech in a language not heard for at least a thousand years. There were splotches of purple on its green exoskeleton. This must be after the indigo started. Can you decipher what is being said? We'll get the computers sorting through what must be thousands of hours of video parsing the languages contained within. By tomorrow, we should have enough to understand this video, ma'am. She looked up with her large, dark eyes, tinged with green. Any word from the landing party? The officer pursed her lips. They are finishing up and will be returning tomorrow. I checked twice, sir. Even on time-lapse video of the chamber. Park shook her head. Our suits have been contaminated. Prickin scrubbed his feelers with orange claws. What has your analysis revealed so far? Is it biological? Can we kill it? No, sir. This stuff acts like a virus, but on a more chemical level, there may even be a quantum component to it. She frowned. As for killing it, the radiation we recorded indicates these people tried to use fission weapons to stop its spread. The officer looked at the door to the airlock. Shut the lights off in there. Let's see if that slows its spread. And then turned his, turned his hands over. We should check ourselves and each other to make sure we're clean. He then opened his eyes wide and froze. What is it, Jones? Sir, the landing gear, the beetle itself has been contaminated. Captain Sedana rubbed her forehead. Losing a beetle hurts, but the main concern is getting all of you back. On the screen, Holder Cricken nodded. We can rendezvous in orbit, but we'll have to physically jump between ships. No suits. Over Tech Tuge made a reaching gesture with her hands. A force net can be calibrated to scoop you up and bring you into the hold. And then we'll bring you straight to the sick bay for a full examination and isolation. Of course, Dr. Chang, the captain nodded. That sounds like a good plan. Work on the details and we'll get our people home. Are you serious? Bujo leaned back in her chair. Industrial sabotage? Sincina nodded. That's what the evidence indicates. But why paint? Sincina flattened her ears and thought. I can't begin to explain why paint was so important to them, but they used it everywhere. In the pictures and videos, all of their buildings were covered in murals. The walls, floors, ceilings, and not just the buildings. Walkways, bridges, vehicles, everything was decorated. The officer shook her head. But why would they create this spreading contempt? We haven't figured that out yet, but there are a lot of references to one very powerful individual who is threatened by some people who invented better pigments and we're practically giving them away. Sincina shrugged her shoulders. Greed, maybe? Team, we've lined up the Beatles' airlock door with the starboard cargo bay of the Virata. The officer nodded to Park. She cleared her throat. This is far from standard procedure. Press your body as flat to the outer airlock door as possible. Exhale as much air from your lungs as you can and keep your mouth and eyes shut. We'll have a countdown. The air in the chamber will blow us out and the force nets will bring us in. Pricken held up a hand. You'll lose consciousness in about 15 seconds. So trust that the crew 
We'll take care of you. The grim faced off and most of the floor. A good team against this stuff is proof that I'm, it has been an honor. Up in a chair on the other side of the screens with her tail wrapped around her like a blanket. Good to see you awake, anchors. Feels good to be seen. Jones closed his own eyes and lay back on the bed. I don't know what to say. He was, is hard but fair for a few minutes. Stories that I have set in a science fiction universe that I call the Etherverse. Um, and at this point in time, I'm going to pause from reading stories and I'm going to answer a question that was asked to me by one of my patrons. <clears throat> so the, the question was, what projects do I have on the go right now? And it's, it's been quite a, a chore trying to cut down the word count to what they need for submissions. And when that's done, it's going to be sent off. I'm currently also beta reading on that has been slow, and I've had to take a bit of a break from it. But I've submitted my first novel for publication, and I'm waiting to hear back. Uh, I'm preparing to write a review of a blues album which is interesting. I've never reviewed a blues album before, but uh, that, should be, that should be an interesting review. And I've contacted another musician about a review of their upcoming album, which gets released in October. So that's um, everything that I have currently on the go. I've got several other short stories that are awaiting being written. And the more personal things were, were oh, one of my readers challenged me to write a happy story. And in particular, she wanted a happy story about dwarves because in so many fantasy worlds, the dwarves are, uh, they're dying off. They're usually violently being, um, having their numbers whittled away and they're, constantly losing who have sailed away in any humans and today I will be received by the large double doors. Her younger sister's interruption pulled love mates from her trance and the golden lines vanished. I think they're coming back. Definitely hear mother's voice, said the youngest sister. Her bright red dress skin. Love mates sighed, closed the book. A mirror had been too overcome to pack for herself and had left the task to Gruntle. Luftmates had packed light on clothes. Luftmates had packed light on clothes in order to fit two extra tomes into her travel chest. She had paused. Caleb Muir marveled at all of the scenery they passed, while Edemir talked incessantly about the family relations. Gruntle and Tusek silently followed. That evening, Gruntel was helping Lofmitz prepare for bed. He opened the hypocaust and fetched it to that of her husband. This is the craft, no dwarf lord, the thing held by. Hilbir half heartedly watched the hills go by, and Ademir looked as though she might be sick. She hardly said a word. Lofmitz, try ride back to their home was not as pleasant for the sisters. Kilabir half-heartedly watched the hills go by, and Ademir looked as though she might be sick. She hardly said a word, loafed midst the words. Gruntel seemed as inscrutable, Gruntel seemed as inscrutable as always. The sisters were shocked to find not only their mother, but her daughter. I am so proud of you, my dear. Your comportment must have impressed some good people in the capital because a suitor has come forward and he has paid twice. You two, she pointed at the younger sisters, will attend this meeting as well. You will sit quietly behind a privacy screen and watch and listen. When your time comes, I expect you both 
to perform as well or better than Ada Muir. She turned back to her oldest daughter. Your suitor, Arzang Tresnak, is from Westland. Before you pout, you should also know that he appears to be very wealthy. There are still not as many clans in Westland as Oldland, so you could become the matriarch of a dynasty or two. His enterprises are diverse, but you will say nothing about his works. He may be your only hope, but do not be too eager either. More instruction followable chairs on a slightly raised dais. Her suitor, Arzang Tresnak, would be forced to stand and plead his case. Advisors with him, household guards almost entirely ceremonial, would stand on both sides of the dais. Their eyes, Caleb, you're leaning closer to the screen. Loaf made. Arzang Tresnak, said Mother, her face a haughty scowl. You have arrived here at Clan Corzan to bring your suit for the hand of my daughter in marriage. I, Mother Zorobin, that I have. His voice was deeper, Arzang. Is Caleb your... She offered in what Mother judged to be far too pleasant of a tone. Mother and Edemir started spluttering. Arzang bowed low to the maid and father filled the hall with his booming laughter. Behind them stated, Actually, mother, father, I claim my right to be rove. Her parents blinked, as if they had misunderstood Lofmet's words. Several diners nearby took notice of the change of air at the head table and set down their spoons and tankards. Beardless servants continued to Lofmitzt turned to the old priest and replied, Precedent was nodded. The eldest turned to the parents and passed judgment. Your child has intoned her right threefold, and Mitz began to realize her error. She would have nothing at all, but could not even pay the fee to the priest. I shall pay, rose a dry voice from behind the maid. Gruntle stepped forth from the tables and set down the pitcher of cider he had been serving. Every penny of the fee shall come from my personal account, which is mine to spend. Traitor, yelled mother. Father had sat back down, and tears were openly rolling down his cheeks. Mother, still standing, turned her ire upon the beardless servant. I'll have you kicked out as well, Gruntle raised a cautionary finger and calmly explained. When this clan made me beardless at the tender age of 10, they swore a holy oath to ever keep and employ me. You have no legal right to evict me for spending my own wages in this way. The priests all nodded. Furthermore, I shall buy from my own account and gift to her whatsoever this free maid needs to start her new life, including passage. How could you possibly have enough wages saved for this? You receive only a token wage to purchase pipe weed, ale, or whatever else sweetens your dry life. Certainly, mistress, Gruntle countered but I partake of no such delights. For over 500 years I have toiled and saved, and in fact invested. I was one of the primary investors in the trans Railroad. My dividends have since swelled my savings, held with the clan. Mother looked down at father, and he nodded his head. Gruntle has a sizable account, my dear. Fine, she fumed, but we'll employ you in the deepest pits until the day you die and leave you there. Gruntle, like a master player at Stoneboard, delivered his final move. Pray inform your wife, master. What would happen should I withdraw my entire account today 
from the planned treasury. A creeping fear filled her belly as mother looked down at her husband. He looked her in the eye and simply replied, ruin. So that was the happy dwarves. Maybe not happy for all of the dwarves, but uh, happy for enough of them. Uh, and I don't believe there are any more questions. It doesn't look like there's any anybody in the chat. Uh, I'm just going to take a sip of water. <clears throat> Use those dwarf voices. It's a little. Uh, it's a, for some of those dwarf voices. It's a little. Uh, it's a little hard on the on the voice box. Um, what's that? You want me to tone down my voice? Okay. I, I had one comment from the peanut gallery that maybe I was speaking a little, little bit too loud. So my, uh, my last offering for today um, is a new story, uh, one that I just finished writing, and I'd like to share that with you because I've had one science fiction story, one fantasy story, and now it's time for a little bit of horror. And oh my goodness, I'm sorry, I'm being distracted here by another member of the peanut gallery. Oh, yeah. This, this is our big chonky boy, Baron. And every once in a while, he just needs a little bit of a pat and attention. And um, especially if I'm talking like I am now, he thinks that I should be talking to him. All right, down you go. I have a story to read, Barry. So this horror story is called A Test of Character. Around. Games bore me. 